All right, guys, by popular demand, we are going to be finally doing it. I have assembled a list of quite a few brands, 35 brands to be specific, and I have all of their logos down here. Apologies in advance because I will probably not end up covering every single survival knife brand out there, but there are so many to talk about, so I figured I would go over as many as I can remember and just talk about these brands, list them up here. I have quite a few ranking options for them, so this should be interesting for sure. Um, but yeah, so without any further ado, let's jump into it with the first brand that has their own special special category and that is Gerber. Gerber is in the smallest tier down here because to rank Gerber in F tier would actually be an insult to other knife brands. So Gerber gets their own brand down here at the bottom. They are the worst of the worst below F. Okay, now with them out of the way, let's actually talk about some other knife brands. So first off, I think we'll just jump into this with Condor Knife and Tool. Now Condor Knife and Tool for me is probably gonna be a solid B tier brand. And the reason why they're a B tier brand is I actually think they have some really good knives. I love the Terrasaur. I love quite a few of their more budget knives, but <laughs> their knives as a whole, just really, they seem to do a lot of the same things and there's not a whole lot of innovation with them so they they're a solid knife company but unfortunately they are just not the best of the best okc or ontario knife company is also going to be in b tier this is for a few reasons i think okc is very similar to condor they have a lot of good and well-priced knives but the problem with okc is that they are in kind of a turmoil where we don't really know who owns them or if their knives will be really keeping up anymore another one that is going to be going a little bit low in my opinion is going to be montana knife company these guys are going to get a d tier in my opinion and the reason why is the, this company along with a few other companies we're going to talk about makes genuinely good knives but they're so overpriced and not only are they overpriced but mkc keeps a artificially low amount of knives or volume that they pump out in limited drops so it's very unattainable to get these knives and they're very overpriced for the materials you pay all right next one up is going to be sford's ford is going to go into c tier now sford is kind of cool because they're one of the only actual knife manufacturers of New Zealand. However, the problem with them is outside of their peasant and they have like one Puko styled fixed blade, they just don't really offer a lot of survival and bushcrafting knives. So I can't really give them a super high ranking here because they just don't offer a lot. All right, next one up is going to be Spartan Knives. And I kind of debate, I think I'm going to put them into A tier. The reason why I'm putting them into A tier is I do have a soft spot for Bill Harsey. And most of the fixed blades, especially the survival fixed blades from Spartan Knives are designed by Bill Harsey. And I love the Chris Reeve Knives Pacific. I think it's fantastic. And I also love a lot of the fixed blades from Spartan Knives or Spartan Blades, sorry. And overall, I think that because of Bill Harsey's designs, they are very, very good. <clears throat> All right, next one up to go into A tier is going to be Reef or Rife Knives. I believe they, they pronounce it Reef. And the reason why they are going into A tier is solid materials, solid um, designs. They give you a good amount of options. A lot of their knives, like the F4, for instance, come in different choices of flat and saber grinds versus Scandi grinds, Magna Cut versus CPM 3B. And I like the fact that you can not necessarily tailor pick, but you have choices and options for how you want a bushcrafting or survival knife. I like that about them. The reason why they're not an S tier is because I think they are too expensive, but not massively overpriced. Next one to go into B tier, and sorry, this is the best um, picture I could do for these guys, but this is Survive Knives. These guys are going into B tier. The reason why is that similar to Reef Knives, they do offer a good amount of options with blade shapes, blade steels, and sizes, but these guys are very expensive, more expensive than reef knives. And the biggest problem I have with them is similar to MKC here. They do very, very, very limited drops. And the biggest problem I have with those limited drops is as I've looked at trying to acquire survive knives, if you can get a survive knife 
from the company if you can get on a pre-order they're not badly priced but if you are forced to go to ebay if you're forced to go anywhere else <clears throat> or even deal with resellers, 90 percent of the time you are going to be spending way more money than you should have to all right first one up going into f tier now this one kind of breaks my heart to put them into f tier but sog knives is going into f tier and the reason why is sog once ago once upon a time long ago and far away they used to be a really solid knife company they used to be good but they have completely sold out most of their stuff is overseas they are very similar to gerber in my opinion i will say i think they are more high quality than gerber but a lot of what sog does nowadays is overseas mass produced knives that are just taking advantage of the SOG reputation that once was, trying to push more knives. So in my opinion, they get an F tier because of that. All right, next one up that's gonna go into C tier is going to be Winkler Knives. Now the reason why Winkler is ending up in C tier, once again, similar to MKC, similar to Survive, these guys have genuinely good knives. Like they're quality made knives. However, the Winkler knife brand is predicated so highly off of Winkler, the bladesmith himself, that they get away with murder essentially. They're using steels like 52100 and 80 CRV that we see on knives that should be or that are far cheaper and <clears throat> There's just not a lot of value in Winkler knives. So they're very expensive for what you're getting. And I just don't think that they offer a lot of quality for what they are, in my opinion. All right, next one up going into C tier as well is also going to be Tour knives. Basically the same exact the rules apply here as to Winkler. Tour, it doesn't have quite as illustrious a bladesmith, but once again, the price versus the value is just really not there. Now, I have owned Tour knives. I do own a Tour knife currently, and initially, they've had some serious quality control issues with both their folders and their fixed blades. I think they have rem remedied it for the most part, but it's just kind of overall, it's just off-putting. <clears throat> All right, let's turn around from this absolute hate spree and go to our first S tier knife. Now Mora, the brand of Mora knives or Mora knife, whatever you want to pronounce it, these guys are S tier 100%. The reason why is whether you're talking about survival or bushcraft, these are some of the first real knives that actually made it onto the bushcraft scene. You can actually see pictures from the people like late Morse Kohansky who actually were using things like the Mora Clipper back in the 70s and 80s and actually doing things like bushcraft crafting they taught um, you know survival skills and wilderness skills classes with those knives and so mora is a budget company you know they're not necessarily putting out any super expensive super high-end knives but their contribution to the actual wilderness um space is they've left a forever mark so mora has to be up here they cannot be any lower than an s tier because the value and contribution that they've added to this the world of knives all right next one up is going to be another s tier in my opinion unfortunately sorry if you guys can't see this one all too well this is cold steel here um, but cold steel is another one that very similar to mora they've been around for a very long time and their contribution to the wilderness and to survival sphere has been very high of course we have things like the cold steel srk that literally stand for search and rescue knife you have plenty of solid options and once again the thing that i like about cold steel a little bit more than mora is the fact that you have things like the cold steel srk that you can get a budget cold steel srk that will run you the same price as most moras or you can step it up and get something like a cpm 3v <clears throat> SRK is going to be a little bit more expensive, but offer you a lot more performance. So you have this really good sliding tier that you can choose how much performance versus cost, depending on how much you need. All right, next one up is going to be SE Knives. These guys are also going to be an S tier for me. Once again, very similar to the last two companies here, their contributions to survival knife, or survival as a whole, I should really say, is impeccable. The are one of the coolest companies I think on this list because SE not only bridges the gap between producing survival knives by people who are trained in wilderness search and rescue and survival, but also they 
SE as a whole. And the reason why I picked this logo for SE specifically is as it says here, this is Randall's Adventure in Training. So they not just only produce knives, but they also do at their home base teach wilderness survival skills they teach land nav they teach wilderness first aid they are not only a knife company but they are a survival company through and through so once again similar to more similar to cold steel their contributions to the outdoor community have been immeasurable and so for that reason they it would be foolish for me to not put them that high all right, next one up is going to be Falkneven. Now, Falkneven is going to get an A tier. And the reason why I put Falkneven in the A tier here is because a lot of Falkneven's designs are very good. They are a solid company, but they've borrowed a lot of design influence from Cold Steel with the SRK lineup. I mean, legitimately, you know, having a Falkneven A1 versus an SRK, they are almost the identical same knife. The only difference is Cold Steel made it first. So I'm not gonna say that Falcon even copied the design, but there is some of that influence out there. I'm not sure you know, the legitimacy of that, but basically the reason why they get A tier is they have a very, very good design. I love the A1, I love the F1, I love the S1, but realistically speaking, they're not entirely their own design and they are very expensive for what you're getting. Even a Falcon even S1 is still $200, uses a triple uh, layer laminated VG10 steel blade and it's just a lot of money. Once again, you can go to Cold Steel and get an SRK and CPM 3V for $150, whereas if you were to go to Falcon even get an S1, which is a similarly sized knife uh, made out of VG10 steel, basically a San Mai steel, which is something that Cold Steel also does, um, you are going to be paying at least $50 more if not more than that. So for me, the value is a little bit lost on Falcon even. And once again, there are better options out there. All right, next one up, and apologies once again, this one's kind of hard to see. Um, this is LT Wright Knife Works, and they are going to be put up in A tier. Now, they're actually in A tier because I really like them, and uh, LT Wright is a solid, solid company. I'm going to see if I can actually slide them over Falcon even so you guys can see them a little bit better. But LT Wright is really awesome. I do think that they, they're not S tier, but they are very close to S tier because LT Wright makes some amazing knives. Of course, you guys will probably know the Legome or Legum, however you want to pronounce it, um, that was partially designed by Morse Kohansky and is an incredible bushcrafting knife. Now, survival wise, that's kind of why I bumped them down to A tier because they have some incredible bushcrafting knives, but not as many incredible survival knives. And these guys are really more prioritized on, you know, wood craft as opposed to sheer survival knives. All right, next one up is going to be Chris Reeve. And I'm putting Chris Reeve, almost put them in S tier, but I'm going to put them in A tier. And the reason why is simply for the fact that they have some incredible knives. Don't get me wrong. I love the um, Pacific. It's one of my go-to survival knives. But when you look at it realistically, Chris Reeve doesn't really focus as much on the survival or even fixed blade sphere as much as they focus on folding knives and it's totally fair they probably make a lot more money with their folding knives but for that reason if you go to pick a chris reeve knife for survival realistically speaking you only have two choices and that's the pacific and the green beret so you know you're not <clears throat> you're not necessarily having tons of options whereas say you go to se you can choose se5 the se6 the hunglis the hunglis 2 you know you can choose so many more knives uh even the se laser strike um, you can just choose so so many more knives all right Next one up, um, and this is just sitting on the, the stack, we're going to talk about Work Tough Gear. For me, I'm going to put Work Tough Gear in B tier here, and that's primarily because they have a wide plethora of options, but nothing here is incredibly standout. They're kind of newer to the sphere, but they are a Taiwanese-based company, and they make some very weird and very crazy designs but the thing i like about work tough gear is they are willing to work with people and they're willing to work with youtube you know survivalists or willing to work with people who have experience get designs out there and that's cool to me they also use a lot of sk um steels so for those who don't know like sk5 and such are essentially the kind of chinese slash taiwanese um 
high carbon steels. So if you think of like SK5 is essentially like the Taiwanese Chinese version of <clears throat> 1095. So it's a very similar steel and very similar in performance. So not bad knives, but you know, once again, kind of going back to that, not offering a ton of value for what they are. But once again, you're not also spending a lot of money. Buck is going to go into C tier. Now, the reason why I put Buck here is similar to some of these other knife companies. Buck is a good knife maker. I think they make, you know, just fine knives. The only problem I have with Buck knives is that they don't really offer, at least nowadays, they don't really offer a lot of true to form, honest survival knives. Like Buck is they make like hunting knives but they don't really offer anything for bushcrafting or hunting or sorry survival at this moment now the reason why i put them here is that at one time they did really offer solid survival knives so they did offer like the buck thug the hoodlum the punk but those knives of course have gone the way of the dinosaur next one up is going to be spider co and i kind of go back and forth with spider co um with spider co I really wish I could put them in a tier because they are one of the first knife companies to make like a really awesome, honest to God, bushcrafting knife. They made the bushcraft, um, which was an O1 tool steel knife helped or designed in part by UK bushcrafters. And it was a really great knife and they still do also make some survival knives, but a lot of Spyderco's efforts, very similar to Chris Reeves efforts are definitely more in the folding EDC um, kind of realm, even their fixed blades like the Mule Team, uh, you know, kind of series of knives, really more like EDC as opposed to like survival or bushcrafting. So I have to put them in B tier for that. They do have some very solid um, folders, but you know, can't really base off of those. <clears throat> All right, next one up is going to be an A tier knife for me, and this is, or brand I should say, and this is Victorinox. Now, some people might ask, you know, why isn't Victorinox up here in the S tier? I think a lot of people would draw similar analogies to Mora and Victorinox, but for me, the reality is, in honest survival practice, Victorinox is really known for their Swiss Army knives. Of course, that's what they kind of like made the Swiss Army knife thing, so they're very well known for that. The problem with Victorinox is that a Swiss Army knife is not really something that I want to take into survival. They have a lot of very, or can have a lot of very useful survival aspects to them. But unfortunately, you know, like a Swiss Army knife isn't really high on my survival list. So they have good contributions and they do make solid um, knives, but I'm going to leave them at A tier for that. All right. Next one up is going to be Tops, and once again, they are also going to be in A tier. Tops, I would give them an S tier and move them up here if it wasn't for the fact that they primarily only use 1095 high carbon steel. And for that reason, I feel like a little bit of their value has been lost because they only use 1095. Now, the reason why they are placed so high is that for the most part, if you buy them um, not straight from Tops, but if you buy them at different retailers, they usually have pretty good prices, pretty good value for what you're getting. And also the biggest thing with tops is the designs. Not everyone's going to like things like the Tom Brown tracker, but undoubtedly, if you want some of the craziest, wackiest survival knife, you know, tools, the tops is likely going to be the one making them. And so for that reason, I give them an A tier because you can get... <clears throat> You can get almost anything that you want or need from them, um, and that's a huge plus for me. Now, Emerson. Emerson's going to get a C tier here because Emerson is a really cool folding knife company, but once again, similar to some of these other companies, um, not so much these guys, but some of these other companies, you know, um, like Spyderco and Chris Reeve, um, a lot of what Emerson does is folding knives and so they don't really have a lot of like survival knife or even fixed blade options that are dedicated towards wilderness living all right next one up is going to be an s tier for me i think some people may disagree here but bark river knives is an s tier for me and the reason why they are an s tier is very similar to tops just about any maybe not just about any but they do a lot of different you know like blade styles blade shapes blade thicknesses just overall knife options bark river is like the king of 
options and just everything like there are so many different models that they make there's so many things that they have made and so realistically if you're looking for just about any fixed blade knife bark river knives has probably either dabbled in it made it or is currently making it and unlike tops the reason why i give bark river the s tier here is because once again you can get their knives in more rudimentary tool steels like a2 tool steel but they also make things in cpm 3v cpm s35 vn cpm magna cut they make them in a wide different um, or wide range of different handle options so if you want micarta you want wood you want antler you want whatever and so there's just so many options with bark river that once again they're kind of similar to tops in the way that they make a lot of wacky and weird designs the difference is bark river is more likely to use more premium blade materials and um, you know just different higher quality features so they're kind of in my opinion bark river is kind of like the high-end version of tops all right next one up is going to be Busey and Busey I kind of struggle putting them in A tier versus S tier I'm going to put them into S tier and the reason why is predominantly because Busey has been around for decades for a very long time and playing with Busey the reason why I put them in S tier is because they are overall a pretty good company and while I would probably recommend steering like if you're looking for survival knives specifically probably steering away from you know their um, combat knives or some of their customs but honestly the scrapyard and swamp rat um, brands or sub brands of Busey are they offer not only a good value because they're fairly reasonably priced and we're talking you know under or 200 to 250 dollars for some really you know good knives but also to um with Busey when it comes down to it the other reason they're getting S tier is they've been around for a long time they do have a good track record and they honestly um, produce solid knives so not all of them are cheap and you know if you go to something like a team Gemini it's going to run you about seven to eight hundred dollars probably wouldn't be my first survival knife survival knife choice because it's uh, going to be more of a um, combat knife as opposed to a survival knife but Busey does make a lot of good options and a lot of serious contenders all right next one up is going to be trc and the reason why i'm putting trc in a tier i actually would really prefer to put them into s tier because they do offer some really cool knives and i think most people when they think of trc at least in the survival sphere they think of the apocalypse but um the apocalypse is a great one they also have some other seriously um, good options the problem with trc and this has been a consistent thing that i've noticed with them is just the lack of availability now don't get me wrong TRC is not the largest knife maker out there. You know, certainly there are larger makers, but TRC just, it's very hard to get anything from them. It's very hard to get an apocalypse, especially. And so when your best survival knife is also your least attainable survival knife, that kind of bumps it down a tier or two, in my opinion, because it just makes less sense for that. Uh, particular company to be chosen and ranked above other serious contenders. So for now, they'll be A tier, but I do think for the most part, um, you know, they do offer good value with their knives and very good, you know, quality survival blades. All right, next one up is going to be Strider. Strider is going to sit next to Emerson because they are pretty much exactly like Emerson. Um, most of what Strider makes is very military, very combat um, oriented. Not to say that they make knives specifically for the military, though they do, um, but primarily once again we're just really looking at a lot of knives that are designed for military applications and not survival or wilderness applications now one that's going to be a controversial pick i'm actually going to put k-bar in s tier and the reason why is a few reasons once again i look at s tier as not just solely what you know the what knives they make but also their contribution to the wilderness and outdoor sphere and undoubtedly even the classic k-bar usmc fighting knife has been a first pick for many new survivalists and many people who are wanting to get more into the wilderness um you know community and so because of that um they have undoubtedly helped start the journeys of many people and i think that earns them a spot here in s tier but also also, too, the thing that I like about K-Bar is consistently low prices, consistently decent materials, and consistently good um, 
designs and we can point you know a lot of people like i said when you look at k-bar you initially think oh well that's the company that makes the uh you know um usmc fighting knife right and that's not really a good survival knife and this is true but they you have the whole bk series whether you're looking at the bk7 the bk2 the bk5 the bk9 um whether you're looking at the bk16 the bk18 um really that whole becker series of knives is produced by k-bar and they're just so many really solid picks in there. I love the BK18. I love the BK16. Love the BK9, the 7, the 5, the 2. Um, they're all really solid picks. And once again, all of them are affordable knives to do good survival practice with. So I think that's another reason why I'm placing K-Bar so high. They honestly have earned it. All right, next one up is going to be Demco Knives. And Demco is going to be put in B tier for now. I think this is one that if I do update my tier list and I do decide to change this, update it, you know, make it new, they could easily go into A tier. The only reason they're down here for now is because they realistically only have two actual Honest to God survival knives in their lineup. And that is going to be the Free Rain and the Arminger 4. And the reason why I say they can go up to A tier in the future is if their track record holds where you know they made the free reign in magna cut they made or they make the arminger 4 in adcr v2 they are really good knives really good prices you can get an arminger for for around 70 dollars if not less and that's once again a knife that is using adcr v2 the same steel that winkler uses over here and so um, you know very good uh, value option there and you know it's a very tough knife you're probably going to see some more of the or you're probably going to see the Arminger 4 on the channel um, I've already have a free reign and I do enjoy it so you know when it comes to Demco they're making good knives and the cool thing about Demco is that because of their long-standing partnership with Cold Steel up here um, they are making them in the same factory so things like the free reign are made out of the same handle materials as the SRK. They literally use basically the same sheath as the SRK. You know, there's different things that are essentially the same. And so same manufacturing process, same, you know, um, place of manufacture. And so I think there's a lot of quality that's already distilled and refined in cold steel that is trickling down to Demco. And that's a big win for me. So once again, if Demco continues to make fixed blades like they have been, I would easily put these guys in A tier, probably not S tier, just because they're so new to the game. Once again, a lot of these companies like K-Bar, Cold Steel, SC, Bark River, Mora have been around for decades. Pretty much everyone here in this um, S-tier category is a knife maker that has been around for over 20 years. And SC might not quite be 20 years yet, but SC also originally started making knives with OKC. So overall, all of these knife companies when it comes to survival knives have been making survival specific knives for over 20 years. All right, Blind Horse Knives. I'm going to put Blind Horse Knives in B tier. Not quite C tier. I think they're a little bit better than that. I just don't really see a lot of survival knife options, and they're not quite as prolific as LT Wright. Of course, LT Wright and BHK or Battle Horse Knives, which formerly was Blind Horse Knives, um, these two used to be one company, and they used to make more survival knives under the Blind Horse Knife kind of theme. But Battle Horse Knives kind of does their own thing now, and they're a little bit more EDC oriented. Oriented. Hinder is going to go down here once again with Strider and Emerson. They do actually make some pretty cool knives. The Ranch Bowie is a pretty cool knife that I think would be valiant in most survival efforts, but because it's not the most attainable knife out there and Hinder definitely has more folders than fixed blades, they're going into C tier. All right, one that is going to go into A tier, and once again, borderline S tier would be Leatherman. And this is specifically predominantly because of the Leatherman Surge. You cannot tell me that the Leatherman Surge, the Leatherman Wave, the Leatherman Signal, the Leatherman, um, gosh, there's so many of them, that are like even the Super Tool 300 that are just so good for wilderness use. Some people will argue Victorinox is better than Leatherman and you know for whatever reason that some people you know think that way. Leatherman undoubtedly is better than Victorinox in survival usage especially things like the Leatherman Surge. You cannot tell me that there's any Victorinox that even comes close to touching that and even if you doubt me then honestly look at shows like Alone where people have taken the Leatherman Surge 
modified it and used that as their go-to knife for the alone like survival tv show so when you look at that um you know the prowess of the leatherman surge and the prowess of multiple other leathermans charge wave super tool uh, 300 and so many others the signal is a little bit uh, not my favorite but still even the signal you know very much survival and wilderness oriented uh, multi-tools that can really hold their own so i think undoubtedly leatherman has secured their spot in a tier for that reason even though they don't make fixed blades they don't really make knives per se they're very similar to victorinox in the way that they make multi-tools all right next one up is going to be half face blades half face blades is going to go down here in d tier i hate to be that guy because i know that there are a lot of i have a lot of friends that love half face blades and once again don't be wrong i own a half face blade um, myself i have owned multiple over the years and once again and once again, when it comes to half-face blades, I just put them down here because I feel like they are very overpriced, limited drops. They're essentially a carbon copy of Montana Knife Company. The only difference is, and the only thing I would give them over MKC, <clears throat> if it wasn't for the fact that they're so gosh darn expensive, is that um, half-face blades does use better materials. Like my Disaster Juniors and CPM3V, Far better than the 52100 ball bearing steel that MKC uses. All right, next one up is White River Knives. Now, I'm not as familiar with these guys. I do not own any of them, but they seem to be pretty decent survival and wilderness knives made with decent materials like CPM S35VN. Not a whole lot to say about them, but I do think most people like them. All right. B tier is going to get Benchmade. It just, I feel like it tracks. The reason why Benchmade's here and not anywhere higher is sure, Benchmade's been making knives for, you know, decades, but they really haven't been making survival knives. They have the Bushcraft, they have the Puko, they have a handful of others that are, you know, more wilderness and outdoor oriented. But once again, not a whole lot of value to them. And I just really don't love Benchmade as a brand. All right, last one up is 3DK Anchorage, and this one is actually Three Dog Knives or Northern Knives. I'm putting them in B tier, even though they are good friends of mine and good friends of the channel. The only reason they're going into B tier is, once again, they just don't have a lot of um like different variants out yet and a lot of their knives unfortunately at least in my opinion kind of cross on each other's toes so they have a puko style knife that is very cool in its own route but it's also very similar to their mak or their mac um and both of the knives the puko and the mac are very capable knives but they're very similar and so you don't just you really don't have a lot of options when it comes to like survival and bushcrafting knives and i would say that for the most part 3dk is more focused on on hunting knives and you know creating knives for um like fishing game processing and stuff like that and there's absolutely nothing wrong with leaning into a consumer base like that and i still will give them this placement of b tier because the biggest thing i like about 3dk is kind of similar to bark river but on a much smaller scale they offer a lot of different handle variants a lot of different steel variants so when you look at something like their uh, mak knife you get you you can get it in you know more stainless uh, steels. You can get it in less stainless, you know, more tool steels. You can get it in, you know, different performance levels for different price points. You can get it in different handle options, whether you want G10, whether you want, you know, um, antler or different types of, you know, like handles for either style points or for usable traction. So anyways, guys, that has been 35 brands and I know I haven't covered them all, but uh, this is, a, I feel like a pretty good line to draw because I can't make a video that's like five years long about every single knife brand out there. Anyways, guys, hopefully you enjoyed the video. As always, God bless, and I'm out.